Okay, this is the next item that we have here. It is a push dote, push dote. Um, those were listed and then I they were unlisted at some point, but they finally sold. How much did they sell for? Um, $23. 23 bucks, not too bad. Hey, I've got everything pulled out here, and this is the very next item that we sold. It was a gold over sterling silver. It's a charm holder. And how much did it sell for? $16 plus shipping. $16 plus shipping. Okay, this is the very next item that we have here. It's a push button. Uh, touch tone phone, nice flesh color, nice little pink color. How much did it sell for, Francis? Twenty-two plus shipping. Twenty-two plus shipping. DSP. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yes, I do know a Megan Johnson. <laughs> I do agree. She is the most beautiful woman in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, guys, the next item that I sold is a bunch of, I can get it out, there we go, got a bunch of fishing line, and uh, it's really good for catching fish, wouldn't you say? Yeah. You're my best catch. Okay, the next item that we sold is this Crayola Caddy, and I just listed it. It's in the original box. The box has a little smushy smush on it. Um, how much did it sell for? 20 plus shipping. 20 plus shipping, and I was so enamorated by your beauty, I forgot to ask how much we sold the uh, fishing line for. 40, 40 bucks, they wow. Paid, they paid a little bit of shipping, they paid five. Like five dollars shipping. 45 bucks for that, and how much for the caddy? 20 plus shipping. Pretty awesome. Okay. I need two of these invitations for five nights at Freddy's. Let's see if I can find them. Here we go. Here's two of them right there. Ooh, sorry about that, guys. It's kind of hard to get in them totes with one hand. Um, sold two of those, paid 75 cents a piece, got a dollar fifty in them. How much did they sell for? Ten bucks. Plus shipping? No. No. Okay, that'd be a five. Okay, the very next item that we sold here is this Kenwood audio timer. It's not very big at all, so that'll be super nice. I'm sure my wife was like, wonder how big that is. And, uh, you know, it's pretty small. It's pretty easy to package, and it's pretty easy to handle. So, how much did it sell for? $35.05? Yeah. Free shipping? Yeah. Okie dokie. I'm over here putting up our packing supplies. Uh, we just got some more bubble mailers in. And uh, we had a question. Does anybody know a really good place to get... Bubble wrap. We were kind of curious. There we go. Where you get bubble wrap from. Where you guys get your bubble wrap. We need to start ordering some in bulk. So if you'd let us know down below, that would be fantastic. And I'm struggling doing this with one hand. Okay, guys, this is everything that we sold. We sold the filters, the invitations, the little silver jewelry, the fishing line, the telephone, the amplifier power inverter thingy mobobber, the Crayola Caddy, and we sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven car parts. Any of these, car, those car, what did those sell for? These were 130. 130, anything else here sell for quite a bit of money? Um, let's see, these were fairly decent, I think. Not uh, 25 25, for those. okay. And then that was probably around 20. 25 for okay. that. There we go. Not too bad, pretty awesome. Hey everybody, I have a quick story to tell you today about an eBay situation that I got myself into the other day. I had a ham radio listed on the site for like 350 bucks, and I got a message from a gentleman wanting to know if I would take less because he didn't know if it worked. And I told him that it came from an adult collector, and I assured him that everything else that I had sold out of this lot of stuff had 
worked. And I said that if it doesn't work, I will take a return on it. And I told him that since I had just listed it, I really wasn't interested in taking offers anyways. So long story short, <clears throat> probably two hours later, I hear, uh, you know, the cha-ching sound. And I go and I check my phone and I see that it had sold. And while I'm looking at my phone, bloop, bloop, up comes a message from the same guy. And I'm like, it's never a good sign. Guys, it's just never a good sign when you sell an item and before they pay for it, they send you a message to ask a question. So I pick up the phone, I check the message, and here we go. He's like, do you know if it works? Can you test it before you send it? And I messaged him again telling him that I don't have an antenna and I don't have a mic to test it with. So no, I will not be able to test the unit. And once again, I reiterated that it in fact did have a, uh, that it, that it did come from a collector that everything worked and it was in good shape, good cosmetic shape. Uh, then he asks, uh, about a power cord. And I told him, I said that in the auction, there was no power cord listed. I said, it does not come with the power cord. I said, you're going to have to buy one. I said that this is a unit that came from Europe. So I said, it's, you could probably buy a DC inverter pretty cheap. It won't be too hard to find one. And you put it with the unit, and it should work perfectly fine. The next thing I know, I'm getting messages back from the guy, and he's asking all kinds of questions about the unit. He's wanting to know if it's ever been repaired, um, wanting to know if uh, if I could ship it cheaper. And and I finally told the guy, I go, let me let me tell you something. I go, this is not the unit for you. Let me just be blunt with you that you don't want to buy this unit. I said, do us both a favor. I said, just say you want to cancel. I said, just say you want to cancel. He messages me back and he reassures that he's going to pay for the unit and that he is not wanting to cancel. And then he messages me back with another list of demands on how I'm to ship the item. And I message him back and I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, this is not the unit for you. I'm trying to talk him out of a four hundred dollar sale i'm like this is not the unit you want i go if you get this unit i said i'm afraid that you're not going to be happy we're i'm going to be out the return shipping i said you should buy a different unit i said i really feel that your expectations are pretty high and i'm not sure that this unit is going to be able to deliver upon the expectations that you have <clears throat> don't hear nothing for a couple hours the guy messages back and he's like okay I want to cancel. I'm like, sweet. So I didn't, but I didn't check this message. Like, oh, he messages back. Now I know after, because there's something else. He says he wants to cancel and then he ends up paying for the unit. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. This is insane. So my wife tells me that he wanted to cancel, but then he ended up paying for the unit. So I said, well, if he wants to cancel, I said, we're going to cancel and I said, we're going to send him his money back. And that was over $400 that I refunded this guy because sometimes the money is just not worth a headache. And that's my personal opinion. I want to know what you guys think below. Do you have a story of any time that you've had a situation where you've had a buyer where you would have rather just given their money back than to have to deal with them? And I'm not saying that and that's the first time I can really ever think. I mean, I don't ever know another time that I ever was just adamant on trying to get a guy to refund the money and um, or try to get a guy to want to cancel the sale because I knew that this unit might not meet his expectations and it was just not going to be worth a headache. Because what I felt that would probably end up doing is that he would end up getting the unit and trying to fish maybe for a partial refund. And I just know what would end up happening. I would tell him to send it back. So what do you guys think? Have you had any situations like that? Do you think I was too harsh? I'm a grown man. Some of you guys were a little harsh on me about the silverware thing. And to let you know what I did on the silverware situation, I refunded the guy minus the shipping and my final value fees. And that's what I did. And I stand behind that decision. Um, but a lot of you guys told me that's what you would do. And I agree with you. I'm glad to know there are a lot of good eBay sellers out there that we are all together on that. Um, but what would you do about this situation? Would you have taken the guy's money and ran with it? This is a high-velocity sales item. I'm not going to have a problem selling it. I know somebody else will come along in a week, and it'll be gone. And hopefully it'll go to a person that doesn't have as many expectations, we'll say. 
So let me know down below what you would do. I love the responses. I reply to everyone. I'm still replying to questions as they come in on that other post, but I'm doing my best in 2021 to make this the year that I respond to every uh, person who writes a comment down below. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do want to say, I want to say thank you to Mike G and uh, Connie K for being new members to the channel. I really appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoy uh, some of the membership only content that I put out. I release some videos first to my members and then I release them to the public. And um, I put bolos and stuff like that out to my members uh, for people that belong to the group. So if you would like to join, there's a link down below. It's two bucks a month. Not much. You help feed my three kids and my wife. And that's pretty awesome. So I really appreciate you guys. Hope you have a good day. Keep on digging. Keep on picking. And as always, God bless you guys.